uh, speaker, Christine, um, who will be talking about WebAssembly. And uh, I will leave it to her to take off. All right. Great. Thank you. Round of applause. Thank you. So like I said, my name is Christine. I'm a senior SRE at Lightspeed. And today I'm going to talk to you about WebAssembly on the server and specifically one of the huge holes in the implementation, uh, how system calls work. Um, WebAssembly, there's a lot of information on there, uh, out there, and none of it is really detailed. Um, a lot of it is specific to general implementations. And uh, I hope to give a higher level overview of stuff. So let's start with what is WebAssembly? WebAssembly is is uh, basically a virtual machine, but designed for the web. It's uh, basically akin to a CPU and supporting hardware, kind of like an AVR microcontroller, but uh, it's hard, it's, it doesn't physically exist, so the basic CPU is hardware independent. Um, it was originally made for browsers, but the implementation is generic enough that you can use it on a server too. Um, so in this uh, talk, I'm going to be talking about things like the outside world a lot. And uh, it helps to know what's inside the world. And in WebAssembly, there's only these five parts. There's external functions, which are defined by the platform that the WebAssembly module is running on. These are also known as system calls. Uh, there's a function table for dynamic dispatch, globals, uh, RAM, and compiled functions, which are separate from RAM, which is different than most other things. Um, so one of the first questions you might be asking is, well, this was made for a browser. Why do it on a server? Um, one of the big reasons that it makes hardware less relevant. Uh, recently, we've had uh, a lot of, we've been realizing that a lot of our infrastructure is built around a single company and a single implementation of a single CPU spec. And the most dominant implementer has some nasty hardware bugs, uh, see Fallout, Riddle, and such. Um, WebAssembly on the server allows us to make the R code basically hardware independent and uh, it removes a lot of the OS uh, nastiness from the equation too. Um, so something you might be asking yourself is, what are system calls? Why do they matter? Well, system calls are basically the abstractions that enforce access to the outside world. Your code has to go through system calls to access things like randomness, the file system, or uh, the network. So um, generally, they're implemented by the platform that the code is running on, and uh, the platform knows everything about your program, more than your program's allowed to know, and uh, your program passes uh, a pointer into its memory to do stuff. Um, so another thing that you might be asking is why this is all really low-level OS stuff. Why is this relevant to WebAssembly? Well, WebAssembly was released as a minimum viable product, and uh, this is how many system calls you get out of the box. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Um, this is both very good and very bad. Very bad because, uh, well, it basically means that everything's a special snowflake, but very good because there's nothing to start from and no uh, cruft to get out of the way. So, uh, also, when I'm talking about pointers, uh, let's conceptualize a WebAssembly a virtual machine as some sort of structure in RAM that has a slice of memory, and uh, pointers are just integer offsets into this slice. This is uh, similar to how Linux works with page tables and whatnot. But uh, pointers are basically just integer slices and integer offsets into this RAM. And uh, it refers to specifically linear memory. Uh, from the WebAssembly world diagram from earlier. So something that I've been making over the last few years is uh, a set of API calls that I've been calling Dagger. It's a stepping stone. It's only got like five system calls, but it's got enough room for an HTTP client. Uh, it's quick, dirty. It doesn't have things like getting the current time, but it's good enough for a lot of my experimenting cases. Um, it's a proof of concept, it's a simple implementation, like 500 lines of code, and it's intended for teaching and learning about uh, the low levels of WebAssembly. Um, uh, Unix has a concept of everything being a file, and Dagger takes this like three steps farther than even Plan 9 did, where everything is a stream. Uh, streams of data are the only interface, and there's basically no magic as possible. Um, another core concept is that simple doesn't have to mean useless. Uh, you can do HTTP client code in less than like 640K of RAM, which, as Bill Gates said, should be good enough for anyone. 
<laughs> so conceptually, Dagger has a process. It, Dagger has individual processes, which are basically a superset of a WebAssembly virtual machine that also has a slice of streams akin to how the Linux kernel has a slice of file descriptors in every process that it has. Um, stream descriptors. Stream descriptors are offsets into this slice and they're used uh, in place where Unix and Linux would normally use a file descriptor. Um, so, like I said, there's only five calls and uh, it's opening a stream, closing a stream, reading from a stream, writing to a stream, and flushing any asynchronous data to the other side. Um, I'm going to walk through these things step by step. Uh, first, we're going to talk about opening a stream, which takes a pointer to the URL and how long the URL is in memory. And uh, this call either opens a stream, a stream descriptor or fails, and the URL scheme of the stream determines the stream target. And uh, in my simple implementation, I've been settling on these five stream kinds. Uh, for logging, which is basically syslog, file, which is a jailed view of the file system akin to how uh, Blueset does it. Um, HTTP or HTTPS, uh, I believe it natively upgrades everything to HTTPS under the hood for you. Um, randomness and uh, standard input and standard output. So let's walk through the code. Uh, this is a simplification of the code that I extracted from deep within the bowels of this thing. Uh, well, not really deep. Uh, but first it gets the arguments from uh, the user, in this case the pointer to uh, the stream URL and the length of the stream URL in memory. And then, because pointers are just integer offsets into the VM memory slice, we just slice the pointer and get the uh, string URL from the memory directly. And then we pass it to the rest of the open file logic, which was too long to put in here. And that's it. Once that returns, that returns a, screen, a stream descriptor or it returns a negative error and it fails. And now closing is also pretty simple. You pass it a, a stream descriptor and uh, it closes it. And if it errors, then something really bad happened and you should probably exit. So oh, this is also a pretty simple call to conceptualize. It uh, takes its arguments from the WebAssembly interpreter and then it closes the file, deletes it from the uh, stream slice in the process memory and uh, if that process fails for some reason, it returns an error. Reading from a stream is also pretty simple. Um, it takes a stream, a, a stream descriptor, a pointer to where you want the data to be read to, and up to how many bytes you want read. Um, normally this returns the number of bytes read or it uh, returns a negative error and fails. This is a bit of a bigger function, so I split it up into a couple more slides. Um, first, it takes the arguments from the environment, and then it creates an intermediate buffer for storing uh, the data that it's read from the stream. Uh, then it reads that from the uh, underlying stream, and uh, once that's done, it copies the RAM into, it copies that buffer into the RAM of the VM. Uh, this might look kind of unsafe, but it actually isn't because if the read uh, fails, it doesn't touch the, the uh, buffer at all. And writing is also pretty, simil is also pretty simple. It copies uh, the data up to the data length to the stream, and it returns the number of bytes written, or it doesn't. Um, this one is also pretty big, so I broke it up. It uh, grabs the, uh, the stream descriptor, uh, the pointer to where the data is and uh, the length, and then it just writes it. it. Then it grabs it out of memory, and then it just writes it. Pretty simple, right? Uh, flushing is uh, for taking intermediately written stuff and pushing it to the other side. Uh, this is mostly used for the HTTP client where you uh, open an HTTP stream, write the request, flush it, and then read the response. Only five system calls and it still has enough room for an HTTP client. So it grabs the descriptor 
and it flushes it. Um, so here's a hello world example. This is, I know this is a GoConf, but I did this in Zig because Zig allows me to be really concise. Um, first, we try to open the standard output stream. And uh, invisibly, if this fails, then uh, the entire thing will fail behind the scenes. And uh, then it tries to write the message and the message link and the message with uh, how long it is. And it finally, to be a good citizen, it closes its standard output. Uh, by default, Dagger does not have anything in the street open streams by default to avoid people from having magic numbers because magic is forbidden here. So we run this with a command line tool and we get hello world. Yay. So uh, future plans for this. This ended up, this was a uh, cut a bit short by an international move. Uh, lots of paperwork and pain with that. But uh, one of the things I want to do is try to emulate uh, things like IOCuddle or uh, IOCTL with uh, something called control streams, where you create a separate stream and uh, write key equals value things for doing things like changing Unix file mode, setting buffering versus non-buffering, uh, authentication in HTTP streams, that sort of thing. Uh, TLS client cert and HTTP streams, that sort of thing. Uh, other things I want to do is more stream kinds. Something that I've wanted to do with in combination with the control streams was to allow for TCP accepting via the control streams. So you would uh, create a stream for the TCP listener and then you would uh, accept with a, with a new control stream for every connection. Uh, I didn't get to that, however. Um, even though this is only five system calls and uh, they don't look like they're very useful on their own, this can actually be enough to handle a lot of production things. Um, a lot of production things are modeled in really a request response type of way. And uh, historically, this has been done with CGI with standard input and standard output. So this is enough to do that. Um, I'm actually working on a functions as a service backend with sort of a bigger API based on uh, the common WebAssembly stuff uh, before that ended up dying in favor of Lassie. Um, and other things I've wanted to do is make it easier to do distributed computing with this. And uh, something else that I've been thinking about for a while is that the WebAssembly VM that I'm using has snapshot and restore capabilities. So I want to try to make transactional computing or like have it try to parse a JSON thing from the user. And if it fails, then just uncompute the parsing and uh, bail and fail. So what you can do is uh, you can play with this code. I have a link to uh, my GitHub repo at the end of this with a QR code. Hopefully it should work. Um, I'd also suggest that you take a WebAssembly uh, web environment and you implement this all entirely from scratch. It, is, it sounds a lot more daunting than it is, but really it's just uh, figuring this, working through the system calls and linking them together and other fun stuff. Um, something else I wanted to do but ran out of time because of that international move is implement a gopher server where every route is served by a different WebAssembly uh, module. And uh, because these things are so tiny, that hello world only uses like 128K of RAM kilobytes. And most of that is overhead that I can't get rid of. Um, so you could have theoretically hundreds of thousands of these even in like a very, very small VM. Um, looks like I actually have more time for questions than I thought. Uh, but if I don't get to you, please email or tweet me. Uh, I'm happy to go into detail. I'll probably even throw in some example code if you end up emailing me or tweeting me. And uh, these are all the people, these are all the shoulders that I've been standing on. Uh, without all of these people, this talk pretty much wouldn't have happened. So uh, thanks to everyone listed here.